Now, can the pe now can the peanuts hear me? So we'll get that tested first. As long as they can hear me first, then I'll know. In case you're not aware, no sound on the stream. No sound on the stream. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, they hear me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Two talk. Yeah, okay. Sorry? Right, now cool. now now we'll just see if everyone else can be heard. Now we talk, right? Oh, yeah, now you can talk. Oh, cool. mm. La la la. That Testing one, two, three. One, two, one, two. Mm. One, okay. Two. But that yeah, that's as far as roadies can go. That's why. One, two. <laughs> one, two lots. Yeah, one too many. Yeah, I don't know why desktop audio mm -hmm. and desktop audio two was not uh, even working. Well, I can hear blue. blue. sounds good. Yes. Oh dear. <laughs> well, well, that's all that matters. We've got someone giving yeah. access. Alan, we've okay, got then. desktop audio yeah. and audio two set for OBS, but they're not even wow. being used. There's no sound okay. coming through them. <coughs> well, like... If they're not being used, why does it matter? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, farmers, is something funny with your screen. You're looking very much like a um, um, Max Headroom. What do we really? need? <laughs> yeah, when you, 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 it's um, <laughs> we need, jumping we need back a, and forth. We need a video to check. Uh, however, we do an Everett. That'll that'll be a good. Experiment. Stop doing it out in the room. Not doing it in here either. Though, what are you about? Yeah, that's okay. on my screen. It's on my Zoom, but it's not doing it. So it must be just my Zoom. Mm. Right. Okay. I'll play in Everett just so we can check. Hi, hi, hi. I'm M M Max Headroom. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Where is... If questioning the shape of the Earth. Is this all real? Okay, well, I'm going to turn on sound in my stream. So. My of course, it's just happening me. inside your head, Harry. I'm coming through down there. And and it would be so laughable. And you guys and are ridiculous. coming through over there. Of course. Okay. If it was that ridiculous. If, it, if I do this, I can cover Farmer's face with my thumb. Idiotic. It is oh. what it is. <laughs> Why would the videos get you look at my light, on my camera. <laughs> I can cover your face with my flipper. What do you want to do that for? Because <laughs> we just live on a blue marble. Right? You're absolutely right. <laughs> and I, and I, I know uh, I'm not sharing it in game, here. And magically there can be combustion and an explosion I knew that. in a vacuum. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> oh. Dude, I knew that. Are you? What, you're being a dick, right? Oh my gosh, I, I hope not. I, I, I wouldn't want to offend you in any way. And somehow the vacuum of space meets the non-vacuum. A bit low. Earth, yeah, I've got it turned down low. Yeah. Without a solid I've only just turned it down low for sound. sound and not maybe quality. the reason why we all feel like we live in an inverted reality. We? I mean, okay. I can turn it up a lot louder. Uh -huh. We? Is because it's inverted it's right, by yeah. design. <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Are you serious? Look at flight paths. Have you ever taken the time to really look at it? I did. No, okay. Is there anything from the peanuts? They don't hear anything. Any or are we still problems? in kindergarten where we look at the globe yeah. and we yeah. ask the teacher, why do we not fall off Australia? Skip. Sounds alright to me. Gravity. And we mm. say, oh, gravity. And then we're programmed. What the fuck are you talking about, man? And it's in every movie. So every the only problem I've got is that little hiccup we had with the Discord. Gravity? Who gives a crap about gravity? But we can work that out later. 
I'm wondering how many of you still believe that the moon is a giant rock that you can land on. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you <laughs> John fast? said it's a good thing we can't hear you guys talking over the really video that's right. Flashlight against the boulder <laughs> and see if that boulder will reflect light back at you. Tell me. Of course it does, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see just it. Say that. <laughs> By the way, did you know that moonlight is colder than the temperature of shade? No! Really? Oh, Jesus God. Yeah. <laughs> that old chestnut. Why would they lie? What would be the yeah, point why would of they lie? all this information? Yeah, why would they us? lie? You're being lied to. I don't to. know and I don't want to know. Oh, good man. What would be the point of them hiding ancient technology? No. No. Free energy. No, 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 no. Water-powered engines. You mean steam? No. Yeah. Artaria? Mm -hmm. No! Mud flood? No, 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 no! Because there wasn't one. Giants? No, 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 no! It's real. No! What was that last one he said? Just people aren't ready for that. I like saying no. I don't know, the, the audio there, always seems to suffer a little bit, doesn't it? Well, I can always rewind it. There. Mm, Two's gate cases. What would be there. the point of them hiding ancient technology? No. No. Free energy. No, 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 no. Water powered <laughs> engines. No. Tartaria. Really plus, these things don't make money unless they actually sell them. Mud flood. <laughs> no, 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 no. Giants. No, 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 no. Ah, giants. It's real. Oh, giants. Yes, people aren't ready for ignorance. That. I like the saying no. Is real. It lowers their enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. Stop share. Just, just looking at. It, I'm, I'm going to have to try and tidy my shelves up a bit more, aren't I? Uh, why have I lost zoom in? <coughs> okay, where'd you just go? We're over here. Yeah, but I'm not getting um the transition from the zoom window. Oh. Um, so you're over there. Mm. Yeah, Blue's but I went back the, other the scene to the source for the zoom window, and it's just black. Um, I don't know. It's not transition. Did you turn it's off not, the? Um, there's nothing there. Even when I transitioned, the there's nothing there. You got YouTube turned on. No, the scene zoom in the zoom window is the source. Okay. But, but it's not coming not through. It's not coming through as a source. Do you try to turn it on and off again? What, the source? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nope. That's not doing anything. Okay. No, that's not doing anything either. I don't know why it does that for you, because I've got, I ran the same sort, <laughs> like I just ran YouTube and it just went straight from one to the other. And I don't know why yours is different. Hmm. Where did, where'd you go? You can't just disappear. Just click on that source again and just select something else and then select YouTube again, maybe. Just try and give it a kick. I 
I'm only guessing what you're doing. I can't see what you're doing. Nah. So. It's not coming through again. What's it say for properties? No, it's saying Zoom meeting. The capture method, the Windows 10 one and up. Is that the one? That's the right one or automatic? Yeah. No, Windows 10. Okay. At least that's what I'm using. No, it's still it's still not coming through. Tens two nine nine Zoom meeting Zoom dot Z match time. Can't see Capture what it is. Client area. Hmm. Well, I could always try and create a new one, Terry, and see if that comes up. Just add new source. Uh, is it a display capture or a scene? It's it is a, a Windows capture. Windows, a window capture, yeah. Yep, that's what it is. Yeah, it's like Zoom, Zoom meeting. meeting. And no, it's a white screen, yeah. so that means you've got to go to... Yeah, go to properties, I think. So yeah, I'm it? down in the or website's match right. title, otherwise that. Otherwise the first window. Yeah. Otherwise the first window of the same yeah. type. And you'll capture Windows 10, yeah? No, it's not capturing any of those. They're all white down capture there. Capture method. Pardon? Capture method is Windows 10 in that property. So it's that new no, one you just coming down. It says Windows match. Oh, capture method automatic. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Change that to Windows 10. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. And turn that one on and turn the other one off. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see it now? Yep. I don't know why. It should come through on there. Yeah, I don't know what what happened there. I don't know. Still doesn't come through. At twenty seconds. Let's see if we can catch. Yeah. I'll... Check that. Transition. Now it should be coming through any second out there. Okay. There we go. Back again. Not here, and eh? Not yet. And YouTube? No, it hasn't come through YouTube yet. Hey! Yeah, I got it. Yeah, no, I had it. I'm while, still yeah. waiting. Yeah, now I've got I'm it. Just up. Yeah, it's put it up. Ah, all that for that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was I doing before that? Like. <sighs> I was watching a bit of Jose's uh, replay with Gary. Absolutely pointless talking to Gary. It, it, it's, it's a waste of breath. Because he's right. He's never wrong. Everybody else is wrong. He's right. That's it. End the story. And as soon as you start to talk, he'll over talk you. Because he's right and you're wrong. Sorry, is there a flat earther that's not like that? <laughs> um, no, Gary is is. It, I mean, yeah, says he deliberately talks over people because otherwise, oh, it's six yeah. on one. Eh, eh, eh. 
He's just so full of shit. But it's what, uh, what's the point in talking to him? He's right, you're wrong. No matter what you say. <laughs> Yeah, you want to put that? Yes, that's right. John Rapp. That's exactly right. Yeah, because completely pointless. Oh, did Mr. Sensible verse Flat <laughs> Earth is 24 7? Uh, it went for an hour, hour and a half. I, yeah, I, I started watching that and gave up. I missed a cursed without a clue. Oh, no, a bit cursed with a higher IQ. Um, did um, did you put in the clues? <laughs> no, but I will. I will right now. Okay. Nice. W W. There you go. There's your clue. W W. <coughs> Today's scientist was a German physicist who was a co-inventor of the first electromagnetic telegraph. He also established the science of magnetic field mapping, and has a SI unit named after him. An SI unit. Yeah, well, you're not an SI unit, is don't you? I hope so. You know, I don't. SI yeah. unit is 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 <laughs> half the time is 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 what we would call metric. SI is standard national, international, the French standard international system. So system, system thank you. System. But you know, um, yes. like 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 the watt, the joule, the pascal, they're all SI units. And the meter and the kilometer. It, and meter, the... kilometer, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The gram. The liter. Oh, I've got to think of an SI unit oh. with a W. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Roden, it would be Gauss, wouldn't it? Because that starts with a double. <laughs> that starts with a No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't start with a W, so it's not Gauss. <laughs> it doesn't help. Oh, dear. I know, it's the Henry. Oh, no, hang on a minute. That doesn't start with a W. Um, it's the... <laughs> the Gauss. There you go, the Henry. Hey, what? <laughs> We and Wheels could have used with that telegraph bit if he'd oh. discovered that. He wouldn't have got lost <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> and not Gauss, Wouse. <laughs> the Wouse. Wouse, yeah. Not Lund. Not Lund. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, come it's on. you that's starting with W. <laughs> I can only think of... Um, oh, I'll put this in the chat. I'll have to uh, Google SI uh, units and see what I get. I, I can only think of one uh, SI can't. unit that starts with a W, and, and that one's named after a Scotsman. Yeah. Uh, is it... Uh, uh, is it... Uh. Really? Is it this one that I've is it this one? But that's not no, nah, it's not that one. That's not doesn't fit. That doesn't fit. I'm pretty sure the barbecue um, wasn't named after him. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good clue? <laughs> yeah, that is a good clue. Even I could get that one. I thought it was two B's for for that. It was only one B. <laughs> wango Tango. God, who did, who did the Wango so, Tango? So he, that would be F. That one. <laughs> F it, w, there you go. John Rapp's done the correct looking up. Not <laughs> the last name. What to get for the first name? Didn't find his first name. Uh, why can't so I find we did this? blue yeah. Witsit and Ether. Where was it? Wilhelm. Yeah, it is Wilhelm, yes. 
How can he be William otherwise? Isn't it? It's a good old fashioned German name. Come on. He's Wilhelm. Yeah. Yeah. It goes with Weber, I spell. Wasn't that the guy's name off um, Hogan's Heroes? I didn't, I didn't know Weber was an SI unit. You know? That's a new, a new one to me. There you go. Thought it was the next Formula One race, Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was trying to think of electrical ones, you know. And so I had, you know, Volt and Ampere and But uh Tesla um I never heard Weber. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I had a Watt, but I was thinking it couldn't have been Watt because first of all it didn't fit, but it also it didn't fit the description. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know there was an SO unit called Henry. There is. Yeah. Yeah. I never used that one either. It's a unit of inductance. Mm. One Henry is a big number, though, in inductance. Yeah. Okay. More importantly, it's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> 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 Apart from, of course, my daughter bought mine, so it's not a Henry. It's a Henrietta. Yeah, it's true. As far, yeah. I, can, as far as I can see, the only difference is it's pink. <coughs> You've got a pink Henrietta. Yes. I like, I like that. Mm. A pink like Henrietta. I said, I didn't buy it. Oh, yeah. Bought. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair enough. I'll let you off on that one. <laughs> pink Hoover. <laughs> oh dear! Oh, that thank you, Irish. Yes. I can't remember who that was. That was Ted Nugent, wasn't it? The Wango Tango. Thank you. Yes, I can't remember who it was. Well, I definitely can't find any debates of any fluff or fluff. Have we got any backups? Yes, it was. I don't know. What did Tim do this week? Um, did he do any at all? Oh, no, he did have a couple of prize idiots on Tuesday, didn't he? Did he? I haven't watched them. Yeah, well, I, I, I think I started watching both of them and thought, oh, I need to move for this rubbish. Well, I, I just looked over. Well, I think we there. covered them on Wednesday, which sort of... Oh, we really... might have done, yeah. Oh, OK. Because sure. he, only, he, he, does a, he does a Tuesday night, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah. I don't think. Let me have a look in my live stream, my streams over the last couple of days. I don't think there's been. Yeah, I'm, uh... looking, I'm looking everywhere. I can't find anything. See, I don't follow modern day debate anymore, so I don't know what's happened over there. Oh. And, and Bev hasn't put out a, a debunking video of us. I don't know. I, no. I, I, I'm not going to sit through his live live streams five nights a week to find out because. Yeah. I, I drop in for the odd minute every now and then and just go, yep, yeah, they're just sitting there talking the same old shite that they do every other night, five nights a week. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at this. This, this is groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> I look I look at their chat window and you just say, do you guys actually talk about anything of any consequence? It's just all memes and put downs and waffles, semantic. Waffles. And oh, this, yeah. really? Shall but I that, shall I but... try try and sound incredulous again? Shall I, what what you're talking about? Ooh. But they don't even talk about what they're talking about in their live chat, in their text chat. It's like no. there's no sort of oh, we said such and such. Oh, you mean this? Uh, yeah, it's like I don't even talk about that. That's just no. gross. It's it's very strange, but they're very strange yeah. people. I haven't heard from CC lately either. I haven't heard of anything new from him. Yeah, yeah he did. Just from the, you mean um, from Winchester, um, what's it, County? Yeah, that's, Westchester that's... County, New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got your, um, I got your um, what, video, Wally. That's I've got that put, put away ready. Um, because because I think it was Planner Wolf. If that's the one you're talking about. Um, videos. 
the what, where's, the sti- where's the steering wheel? Yeah, that's uh, the one. <laughs> where's Wally? There. You're talking you about the, the Sawyer's one, Wally? <laughs> the Sawyer's a leak, leak into space? If that's the one you're talking about. Quick, somebody put their finger over it, if they can find it. <laughs> that's half a problem when these things spring leaks. It's... it's, it's you know, usually behind panelling and insulation of it, it's like, oh shit, where is it leaking from? <laughs> so, so on, the last... on, on Jose's, was it only Gary that was there that was the flat earther? Um, because I didn't watch the rest of it. I only got up to two hours and twenty. I only stayed for maybe not even two hours because I I buggered <laughs> off to Pipstream instead. Because oh, okay. Jose's went on for quite a while last night. It's nearly four and a half hours, I think. Four hours eighteen. But yeah, I, I, um, I, I think Gary, certainly in the time I was there, he was the only idiot in there. And okay. so I, I thought, oh no, I've got somewhere else to be. What a shame. Like, Gary is stopped. an abject waste of time. Oh. oh, did no tanks come in as well? Yeah, he's he, he's just a troll. He, he it that's like all that. he's yeah, all he's doing because he'll ask you a question, you'll give him an answer. And then he'll repeat your answer back, but it'll be totally different. It'll be what he wants to hear, not what you said. And he's always going, yeah, yeah. He'll say some nonsense and go, yeah, 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 yeah. As if he's just made a point or something. I mean, he, he, he is just there to troll. Which is why I don't bother talking to him, because what's the point? <laughs> Uh, DFE dropped one just then. It's forty-five minutes long. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a bit. That's pushing it a bit. Forty-five minutes on on relativity. No, it was uh, schooling wits and the flat, flat earth, earth, earth is in relativity. relativity. In relativity. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, I see this yeah. now. I get you. <sighs> now that I can receive the whole title. <laughs> yes. 45 minutes on relativity. Could be relatively boring. <laughs> well, while you are thinking of that, I'll grab you know who. Yeah, yeah I think he's, done, he's done a new one, hasn't he? Um, let me see. I haven't got anything against relativity. It's just a fairly dense when it comes to information involved. <laughs> I'd rather watch paint dry. <laughs> Do not watch this without a friend. But if you watch paint dry from, you know, a couple of light years away. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen, is it? No. <laughs> You'll see it before it starts. So. Oh, don't, don't start. Oh, you idiot. Oh dear, what's happened there? We we lose yeah, that. What's happened there? Uh, we lose we lose um, Zoom every time I share screen for some reason. Oh dear. Oh dear. What if someone else shares a screen? So when you share when you share a screen, the Zoom. I thought you. I thought the main Zoom window disappears anyway. You just yeah, see it, whatever screen. Yeah, but it yeah. zoomed for the peanuts as well. Yeah, it's gone black out there. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I've, I've stopped just here. And to... Now I've got to get me you... Zoom back again first. You you kind of need to swap over to. Um, you need to you need to point them at it first, don't you? And then swap over to Zoom in, then share it with us in here. No, I think it's the version you're using. I've got to be honest. Because I'm running a mirror of this exact same new um, Zoom, mm. and it switches back and forth when you share with that upon. Yeah, I, so. I'm not going to share until I um, so I can figure out another way to do it. Mm. As soon as I go to share, where is it? Yep, it goes black. As soon as I go to share, oh. it goes black. Oh. What we could do, though, Terry, just to get past that, if you send a link out, we'll put it in the internal chat. One of us could play it. 
No, no, no. That's and then you not, have to share not, it. That's not the problem. That is not the All problem. Right. That's not the problem. I'm usually just I like to, the problem, not. Usually I share the um the channel for for these guys so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, so we, you're not actually pushing out the sh the Zoom share. You're pushing out the just the direct YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I yeah. see. So the peanuts. Otherwise, the peanuts are going to be seeing it like that. Then I go to share. So, are you switching in your I application still... from Zoom? Yeah, and then I are you switching lose... from Zoom? Then I lose zoom over yeah. in the um, preview screen, preview yeah. side. Now, what I'm asking, is... yeah, what I'm asking, do you have a separate source for YouTube and Zoom, or are you using the same one and just flicking between them? In the scenes, I've got Zoom, opening scene, and intro, and Chrome. I've yeah. got separate scenes for all that. So, Chrome, so Chrome is a separate app, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what scene, and that's what you do scene. YouTube on. Okay, that's all right. That's what just one there. So, but for some reason, when you flick to the Chrome, you lose Zoom. No, when I flick from sh transition, and I share screen, I haven't even flicked over to the Chrome yet. So which ones were we? I think we've done that one. Physics, metaphysics, Antarctica is not an ice wall. I think we might skip on flat earth. Sure, it's not. Yeah, I'm going to skip that one. We'll go to this one. Lindy speed. Yeah. Why is it doing that? Ah, uh, that's good. It's coming out in the chat, out in the um, YouTube. some reason it's yeah I was just looking at something over in OBS in the Z and if I go to zoom as the scene and zoom meeting as the source not showing up in the window as a zoom meeting for some reason okay so that's weird I'd have to I'd have to share the screen to show you that one what, that's why it's doing it. For some reason, it's not allowing to show up over there while I'm sharing. Hmm. And while you're sharing, Terry, your your screen doesn't effectively doesn't have a meeting window, does it? That's visible. Therefore, OVS can't transmit it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, over in the preview one, it's just saying no. Because if I go to the scene for Zoom and Source for the preview while I'm sharing, I can't go to the properties and, and pick a window that it's as a choice. Yeah, because the window isn't there. Yeah. <coughs> It's got meeting controls, meeting chat, participants, Google Chrome and Google Chrome. They're the only choices it gives you to share while I'm sharing in Zoom. Which it didn't do before, so it might be this version of 
that's the newest, but fairly the new version. It's 27 OBS. Uh, anyway, uh, that's seven's not the latest version anyway. Not quite the latest version, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a because I'm on 28.1.2. Okay. Well, this this one I can minimise it down to less than a quarter of the screen, the 27. But I don't know if the the other ones after that will do that. All right. What am I doing? Press play. Well, then you're lucky pressing play. Hi there. Just thought I'd do um, a video today on some topics that have been brought up in the last couple of days. Hi there. Welcome to Flat Air Philosophy. Everything's flat earth here. All based on actual facts that no one can actually yeah. understand or comprehend or Don't even want to agree word. with. But I still plot on. It's based on facts that I know. can understand. Right All on. the ancients knew. This is why I'm exposing it. This is where I got the information from. No, don't expose all yourself. The cultures, live they all on, knew no, the system. It's all, it's all distributed throughout history and all the esoteric knowledge that's been written down. Uh, it's a bit like when God says in the Bible, you'll go down and separate the languages or whatever. Well, it's a bit like that because there's a bit in every religion and there's a bit in every tale. Like you've got Plato there and you've got the Medica over there and you've got... Um, uh, Homer's Iliad and the other one, you've got Pythagoras or you've got Euclid, it's all there, it's all scattered, I could bring the whole lot together and create the whole model of our Earth, and I have. So, anyway, today's video, some flat earth facts and physics. So, this flat earthers hear this story here, land past Antarctica. Well, Antarctica is land, that's what I said to a mate of mine, <laughs> what do you mean land is past Antarctica. Do people say the boot of your car is past the car? No, it's part of the car. Antarctica oh, is a land mass actually said was past with the a south and big pole. shelf of ice all the way around its seashore, sea line, uh, shoreline. So get that one. So this is um, someone I was talking to, deeply indoctrinated. Hmm. You know, some of these people, it's going to be really hard to get through to them, okay? So they say to me, so you're a flat earther, so you don't believe gravity. Ha, 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 They laugh. They have no understanding of flat earth whatsoever, and they're laughing. I mean, they didn't even give me a Neither chance to say whether I agreed or not. I said, it, it depends on where you think gravity is, what it actually is. So for these people who just come out and say stuff like this, You've, you've got to expand on it with them and see how far you can go and what they actually know and you'll find out most of them know nothing. So you say, well, do you know gravity involves uh, general relativity? And then expand on that. Or well, what do they know about general relativity? They won't know much. They won't know anything probably. So then you, um, you say, well, what, what's general relativity? What's the basis of it really? And, and then, you, then you have to tell them it's... Um, it's a curved linear coordinate system, which is basically describing the toroidal field of air. Hey? So, what? and then What's you can expand on that. So, well, what does science mean by curved linear? Right. Okay. I mean, to the curve no or it's either. linear, straight or curved. Well, let's break that down. You see, from the north to the south, there's, there's what we call meridians. Meridians on the Mercator map, they don't use it so much on this one, they just call them arcs of longitude in the decent right. map. But from there to there, the north to the south is a meridian. All the way around. All these there's meridians everywhere. It's part of the toroidal field. There's the north, there'll be another one here. So it's general not, relativity is talking about this toroidal really. field. <laughs> now this this is look, that's that's linear, that's straight. So this there's, there's a side view of it, but looking down on it, it's straight. But it's curved. It's curved. So one, they're referencing this, this type of situation here, but at the, and at the same time, they're going to curve linear because the magnetic field, well actually there's the, tropi there's the tropics here, tropical gap, they, they curve like this. It comes out of the north and curves like this. This is how the field works on our Earth, flat Earth. I mean, 
no one's even touched on this. This is like another world first of mine, discovery. This is how the um, celestial bodies move in the southern hemisphere, this way. Out of the north they go like that. And then exactly. there's a straight patch in here. You see, this, is the, this represents the bow. The bow, hand grip, an ancient text, esoteric knowledge, stories, Homer's Iliad, the, the uh, Trojan War. It's everywhere people want to look, but, you know, most people are pretty ignorant. Yeah, yeah. They just believe whatever they're told at school or what's on mainstream media. So, you know, so you've lost this person already. They know nothing. But if you can bring those things up and have an understanding, you can bury them every time. So, so just realise um, general relativity is talking about the, curve, the curved toroidal field. Toroidal field looks like this, doesn't it? It's all... It's all curved. And then you have the reverse curving. It's sort of oh. back this way. Pretty bad art, but you know what a toroidal field looks like. Look it up if you don't. There's a positive and a negative system going on, you see. The field will come out over the Earth positive, down through the Earth, through the Earth negative, come out again over the top positive, through the earth and out and over the top again, positive. Negative is through the earth, positive over the earth. That's just one of the dual systems. <clears throat> okay, so understanding what gravity is, um, so they're connecting this curved linear stuff, they're calling it gravity. Well, it is, because it's part of the two-way system. You know, the black hole where earth is created, is created from the black hole, place of rest. You have this downward force and this is upward force in the vortex. The two coming together have created the fixed and stationary equilibrium in the centre here. There's a two-way system, positive and negative. And that's what creates it. That's why we have a moving toroidal field over us. That's what all the star why the stars and everything are moving in that they're moving in that toroidal field. Long story. I should get more specific with that in a particular video I might do one day. Uh, I've got scattered through a lot of my videos. Um, another subject was regarding a video I put out a few couple of months ago, maybe, uh, about the cold fusion, um, about how the, we get the fresh water flowing through the earth from the Arctic to the below the tropics and moves around the tropical zone here, comes out of the seat and flows around the tropics here. Then someone asked... Um, no, it doesn't. What do you mean science doesn't know where it comes from? And it's exactly what I said. I said the scientists do not know where all this fresh water in the deep aqueduct system comes from. Go online. Unless it changed it in the last month or so. And this water flows around beneath the, beneath the ground, beneath the tropical region. And then this guy asked... And how do you know that? How does the water rise then? He's talking about water. And I, I never said water. I said the molecules... Hydrogen molecules rise up through the tropics because this movement of water beneath the ground, this pure water, the hydrogen molecules build up kinetic energy. They build up, become basically high pressure and want to, want to seek low pressure. So they, they rise up through the tropical region around the Earth. And this is the hydrogen molecule. They, they, they seek the lower pressure region. And as they elevate, it's even getting lower and lower. The pressure is getting lower and lower. So the hydrogen molecule is rising up to the tropical gap. So what's a hydrogen molecule? How does it become water? A hydrogen molecule, molecule is two protons and two electrons. What are they doing? Where are they going? I'll put this in my video. Two protons create helios, helium. Two electrons, in this situation, create Equilibrium, balance. So the two electrons in the system rising up, pairing, is feeding the black hole, and the two protons are feeding the sun that sits on the horizon of the black hole. Because what's happening is in the tropical gap, all the way around the flat Earth, the sun we see is attached to the centre, the actual sun we do not see. It's an umbilical cord, I call it. And this is where well, actually, not necessarily there. Uh, it could be at this point. 
where they're being drawn into the centre of the Arctic. But all this, the, the low pressure of the molecules here are being sucked into the centre here. So they could be drawn through the Milky Way, which I think they must do, otherwise what's, what's its purpose in this situation? So everything gets drawn towards the Sun, as the, as the Sun we see moves around the tropical region. The magnetic field, they swing into the Sun and swing around the Sun. Because what's happening here is a magnified image of what's happening back in here. So you have to think of the two systems. This is a blown up version of what's going back, going on back here in creation. So the two, the two protons coming up are forming the sun. But they're not really forming the sun. This is a reflection of the actual sun. They get pulled in to the center to feed the actual sun. This is, um, so this is expansion around here. Expand, expansion of the molecule as it rises up. And then it has to go through the eye of the needle. It's something like that mentioned in the Bible, isn't it? There's expansion and contraction. So the two electrons are going in here to feed that black hole of creation, and the two protons are feeding the sun. But then you have to start thinking of, um, you know, if you're up with your theology, uh, or esoteric stuff, why, why is there two snakes up the totem pole of the Holy Cross? Two crosses, two snakes. The dual system. Why is there two by two in Noah's Ark? It's all about that up. the duality. Yeah. To think. This is what all the... All the um, There's no two snakes on the cross. Religion's all about. They're telling yeah, a story cross he's talking about, about the way that earth works. And how it's associated with the man's mind, the brain. Earth's been woken up. It's been created by, by a son. Man has to wake up wake up his pineal gland. That's the son of man. Oh, God. Wake up his pineal gland. Hope you get that. <coughs> so Noah, you know, Noah, it's represents <laughs> godly, praise the Lord or something. Yeah, that's what he said to each other. Two pr and then the word ark, are feeding the sun. I could talk all day and still I people said, won't get this. That's what you said. Ark is mentioned in many, many things. You know, Noah's ark, you got, uh, what's the woman's name, French woman? Joan of Ark. It wasn't a real person. That's what we might think when you've been torch. Joan of Arc. You've got uh, Arc of the Covenant. It's the same name. Cover, the the covenant. <laughs> Cover the Ant. You're a little man in here. Covenant. Uh, it's understanding all this stuff if you've got the uh, knowledge. The Ark of the Covenant in the center of the brain. That's your <laughs> Solomon's Temple. <clears throat> um, the different okay. Ark. The name is spelled the same. <laughs> right, the ancient, ancient flat earth map. Yeah. Ancient flat earth map, they yeah, uh, the decided to show the world like? in 19, 2017, I think. It was drawn in 1587 by this Urbano Monti. Now, if you go check that map out, you'll find there's lots of um, lots of these all the way around the outside. What have I shown in my earlier videos? How these represent the reflection back Did here you in the north. What are you talking about? It's your southern, a southern image in your arc of horizon. There's many south poles. Wherever you are, anywhere around the Earth, you have a direct north to south meridian, there will be a southern image of that slice, a little bit in there, of the north, coming out here. To understand that, you need to go back and check out my last few videos. So everyone, oh, yeah, no matter where gets his own little arc of horizon, <laughs> his, own, uh, his own star trail, it's fixed, it does not move. But if you were to track the stars, track them, they move west. They move this way, but they don't in the north. The northern star trail rotation just doesn't move. See them. Just goes just around. It doesn't wander off. These all wander up this way, because this is like a, a wheel oh, they don't. rolling around the central northern wheel. Done videos on that. So check out my next video: the sequence of the hidden sun. Oh, that sounds interesting. Mm. I thought I was the only one that knew about this. But science does know about it. You are. We don't talk about it. <laughs> like you made it up. up. There's some that's back in there. Um, I'm the only one that knows about my own personal delusion. Subscribers yeah. of mine basically ignore half the stuff I tell them. I don't know why. It all makes sense. You have to stop and think. They just get a. They get some system <laughs> in their head to go with it. Yet yeah, they don't understand the two hemispheres, the two, the difference. I understand them fully. I should make a video of all the science discoveries I've made in physics. <laughs> I did one once 
about a year ago, but I only mentioned a couple of things. But, you know, I think I've discovered a few more since then. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And even, even the video on Euclid's five know. postulates. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't understand the fifth postulate. And they don't even realise that the four lead to the fifth. All roads lead to the fifth. They made up their own ideas about the fourth, four. Couldn't quite figure out the fifth. So that's when they went off and decided to create their own called non-Euclidean geometry and create the sphere and then do everything with a sphere. When Euclidean geometry is all about the, the arc, the dome, the hemisphere. Well, okay, I hope he hasn't been listening to you know who. I think I'll, I think I'll no, write to a science <laughs> journal, one of the big science journals, no. and see if they publish it. Probably. There's no way, because <laughs> it's a bit like what Plato tells us in, a, in, in, in his dialogues, or someone, Socrates or someone mentions, it's all so easy. But then it goes on to um, basically tell you that the get there is tricky, but once you find it, it's so it's so easy, and when people realise what it actually is, just the way I've described it, they're all going to slap themselves. But the truth is, they're oh, going thanks, to ignore Lindsay. it. Somebody they don't want the to be peanut gallery fools. said, uh, "Slap Lindsay, please." They don't want he slapped himself. The world was, a, was flat. Good man. Now slap yourself hard. And this globe stuff is just total BS. All over YouTube, there's all these globe videos or ancient history and they keep shoving the globe in there and they're talking about ancient it's cultures a globe. and they keep throwing in things like because it's a globe you know i don't think they should say because they knew it was a globe sometimes they do i suppose sometimes they they knew it was a globe so the blah 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 or because you know it was a globe so blah 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 they just make it all up it's all lies <laughs> yeah, all your history is all lies <laughs> basically <laughs> It's just all lies. But you're using history. So, so it's all your I've stuff. I've described all that quite well. This, you'll this, just pull it up on history too. Yeah. Um, confusion. <laughs> when you understand this, how it works. Cherry pick much. These molecules, raising molecules, the atoms, t two protons and two electrons. <sighs> Excuse me. That's how we're going to get cold so fusion. How does that got to do with the water? Because it's expansion and then drawing them back in through the eye of the needle, contraction. Tight magnetic field. They know all about this. Um, and it's all cold because the sun, the sun back here, the sun we don't see, sitting above the Arctic, it's not, it's not the sun they tell you it is. Those temperatures, ridiculous. It's all garbage, all lies. All lies to fool the masses. And all the masses go along with it. Except a few people that follow me. I think most of my subscribers are actual, actual <laughs> science wannabes or physicists. Keeping an eye on me. Did. Just realise Elon Musk. One of these, maybe. <laughs> Anybody who seeks the truth should be following Dr. Sheba. He exposes Elon Musk for what he is. Exposes the backdoor portal to Twitter. He found it all through his court case. No one else helped him out. No one finan finances him. They're all against him. They're all one big establishment. And the system is rigged. It's quite clear in his, his, when he ran for Senate, Massachusetts or somewhere, the way they fixed the system to shut him out. He should have won in the yeah, landslide. Yeah, that is a bit ironic, Ned. Dr. Yeah. Shiva, get on board with Dr. Shiva, okay? What was I going to say about Elon Musk? It's a con. It's a big con. He's part of the establishment. <laughs> I, knew, I knew what was going on, and then Dr. Shiva just repeated what I, I had in my head already about how he gained all his money and all that. I knew all that. I knew it. If you're seeking oh, the yeah. truth, you just sense you find the truth. Easy. It's out there in the wide universe. Open the mind, it all just flows in. It's out in the universe. So, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that, shall I? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Plenty of likes, like, more likes, the more it'll get out there, hopefully. Now, oh, that's what I was going to say about Elon Musk. No. Remember, he said <laughs> Shit. Twitter is free speech, <laughs> but it's not free, free, what do you call it? can't think of the word now, I can't remember it. It's not free. In other words, you don't get an audience. They shadow ban you. You're basically talking to yourself. You might get a few likes or whatever <laughs> here and there or tweets or whatever. But <laughs> no, you don't get the audience. Just like I don't. Yeah. All my information, this, sure it's not. <laughs> this would have gone wild by now, but there's only 5,000 subscribers over three or four years. This is what they do. They're all the same. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. They shut you down.
They just lock you in. So you can't get out there. You have to hold public assemblies. And then look what happens. They ban you, like oh, Jacinda Ardern here, banned Harvey Yemen from coming over and following the uh, protest, the Wellington protest. They just, they just shut you down every which way. Dr. Sheep will tell you all about it. Go check him out, one of his latest videos on Elon Musk. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>
<coughs> well, you need to sort that out, Terry, because... <sighs> Right, so that's the end of Lindsay. <laughs> Try that. I have to reset that every time. Either sharing or... Every time I do sharing, that seems to be doing that for some silly reason. Mm. Mm. That's oh, sorted yeah. now. That, that, they'll have it out there now. <laughs> Yeah, they should be. No. I'm getting it on my end. Yeah, they got it. They got, they got it now. Yeah. As I was saying, the girl okay. on the right yep. is cheating got it because now. she's using some sort of um, physics to help. <laughs> yeah. Some sort of physics is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, that is an emotion, right. I think, is what he's thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Another word popped to mind, but I thought, no, I'll just use the word physics. You're yeah. thinking of pneumatics. <laughs> Re okay. Yeah, okay. Here comes your questions <laughs> then. Okay, there's a couple of hard ones and a couple of fairly easy ones in today's lot. So let's start. Iben Fadlin met these people along the Volga River and witnessed a funeral rite in which they threw dead livestock onto a boat. Who are these people? Hungry? That's my guess, Paul. <laughs> yeah, Alan's, Alan's got it first off. He's fine. Um, that one? <laughs> Not those ones, Farmer's okay. Point. No. Um... The descendants of one of these people named Rurik ruled the Kievan Rus. Not the Volgons. <laughs> oh, dear. That's the ones, farmer's boy. Yeah. They served as bodyguards to the Byzantine emperor as part of the Varangian Guard. Who were they? Some of these people who fought without armour in a frenzy were called berserkers and members of their upper class were called Jarls. Who were they? A farmers. Do you remember the movie The 13th Warrior? Yeah, yes. not Ukrainians. Yeah. The alert. No, not Ukrainians. <laughs> <laughs> they established Vinland in modern-day Canada around 1000 AD and oh, travelled there was. using long ships under the leadership of Leif Erikson. Who were they? How oh, the gods? Yes. <sighs> there you go. Big Blue's got it. Timbo Turtle's got it. Armist Boy and Alan have got it. And Jinx Yu was the first person to get it out in the peanuts. Followed by John <coughs> Rapp. It was indeed the Vikings. Name these seafaring Norsemen who did not actually wear horned helmets. It was the mm -hmm. Vikings. Mm -hmm. and, you led Zeppelin yeah. in the immigrant song. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and William the Bastard was descended from them. <laughs> I'm descended from them. You were Viking. I came up. I came over with the Norm. My family came over with the Normans in 1066. Oh, I came over. Yeah, I've, I've aged very well. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and of course, the Normans were the Norsemen. <laughs> they were the Vikings who settled in northern France. Yeah. If anybody's watched any yeah, of the spam, Viking spam, series, spam, 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 spam. spam, spam. bloody so, Vikings. Yeah. Where's your helmet? <laughs> okay. Question two. At pressures exceeding 150 gigapascals, hydrogen sulfide becomes one of these materials. What does it become? Very flat. And I thought the air bottles, <laughs> I thought the air bottles on my paintball marker were at a high pressure. Bloody hell. Yeah. 150 gigapascals is pretty high pressure. Yes, extremely. 
<laughs> not metal. The ratio of a coherence length to penetration depth is used to classify these materials. What mm. kind of materials? A solid's a bit too broad um, ranging there, um, guys. Be... be a bit more specific. A bit of a guess. Where's the chat gone? It's over there. Fruit roll-ups, no. <laughs> Fruit roll-ups. <laughs> I've, I've just chucked your guess in there, Paul. Not plasma. Yeah, all right. No. Oh. Timbo Turtle has it correct, though. Ah. Oh. Yttrium barium copper oxide is an example of a high temperature form of these materials. Its type 1 and 2 varieties are differentiated by their ability to completely expel magnetic fields. In the Meissner effect, what are they? One more clue. Josephson junctions join two of these materials together whose properties are explained by the existence of Cooper pairs in BCS theory. Not a clue. Ah, uh, yeah. Big Blue's got it right. Alan Evans has got it right. Timbo's got it. And Nerd Alert has it correct out in the peanuts. Oh. Well done, Nerd Alert. They are superconductors. Name these materials which have zero electrical resistance. You would have all got it from that. Yeah. It is indeed a superconductor. Yeah. All right. Question three. This phenomenon is responsible for thermal broadening of spectral lines. What phenomenon would do that? Explained by the tropical gap theory. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, I have a guess, but I'm waiting. Tuning a laser to a frequency slightly below the electronic transition frequency of a given atom allows for this phenomenon to be used in laser cooling. What is this phenomenon? Hmm. I was thinking of. Observation of canal rays affected by relativistic time dilation, allowed Eves and Stilwell to observe the transverse form of it. <laughs> You'd be right there, Blue. I'll give it to you, Blue. Doppler something, says Blue. <laughs> oh, Doppler something. Uh, you're in, no. A whole oh, heap of people out in the, um, in, in the peanuts out there, I believe it was... Nerd alert, he got it first out there with the Doppler effect. It is indeed the Doppler effect, yes. This phenomenon explains the redshift of receding stars and galaxies. Name this phenomenon the change in an observed frequency of waves emitted by a moving object. It is the Doppler effect. And yes, there is such a thing as the transverse Doppler effect. Yeah, nerd alert got it first out there. Yeah. Hmm. All right, question four. This is the colour of the Q flag in the International Maritime Signal System. What colour is the Q in the Maritime mm. International Signal System? Mm -hmm. Maybe one of 24 <laughs> or 26. Ah, this is the background colour of both the flag of the Qing dynasty and the Gadsden flag, the latter of which depicts a black rattlesnake above oh. the slogan, Don't Tread on Me. What colour? Is it that? That's the one. Alan's got it. Big Blue's got it. Timbo Turtle has it. Oh, Big yeah. Blue's got <laughs> it twice. <laughs> <laughs> And that, and that was a lucky guess on the first clue. Hmm. I, I have a feeling, me. but I don't want to give, give it away. Yeah. Maybe you one of your clues. Just me so. out there has it correct too. It is indeed yellow, but here are the rest of the clues. Though it isn't white, a flag of this colour paired with a sign reading SC 
indicates that a safety car is on the I would have got, I would have got that Formula one. one race. I would have yeah. got that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a star of this colour appears on the flag of Vietnam and across this colour <laughs> appears on the flag of Sweden. Yeah. Name the primary colour found at the bottom of the German flag beneath stripes of black and red. It is yellow. yellow. I, yes. I guessed it from Cube standing for quarantine and then I thought, well, the quarantine flag is yellow. So. Um, I wouldn't know that. Either. I thought that might have been one of your, one of your clues. You got yellow out there. <clears throat> um, Terse, I think. Terse, yeah, Terse yeah. first. Question five: This faith's practitioners play drums during Nyabingi gatherings. Um, oh, Which group God. of religious nutters is this? <laughs> Allegedly, Dave for yellow. <laughs> is it those silly buggers? Yeah. It, no, it's not no. those. All ones. right, there's, there's plenty of other not silly buggers then. Um, yeah. This religion's concept of liberty stresses righteous living, partially oh. through adherence to a dietary um, system called I have I had a Morrissey towel once. Who are these? This, the, I have no idea how you spell it. I not don't the know Swahili, it. not the Shinto. No. Is it them? Is it them? Is it them? Paul? Is, it them? Is, it, is it them? Is it them? Uh, I know what you mean, but no, that's not how you spell it. Jim, <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it? What, but is it them? Oh, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> I know what you mean, though. A work by Robert. <laughs> Athel Rogers, called the Holy Pibby, is one of this religion's oh, sacred texts. Well, that just sounds uh, ridiculous. Yes. And John Rapp has it correct out there with the Rastafari or Rastafarian. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, Not as Timble tried to tell me. Raf, the Raf, 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 Raf Rastarian. <laughs> 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 the Raphrasterians <laughs> and your remaining clues were in this religion, communities causing downpression are referred to as Babylon in contrast with religious Zion communities. Adherents of this religion refer to God as Jah and venerate Hail Selassie. Name this religion popular in Jamaica, which values smoking ganja. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is. It is. In yeah. mind, you want some ganga? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Willie, we'll see you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that how you spell it? I was close. I had an R that's, at the start. That's, yeah, <laughs> well, you, had, you, had, you, had, <laughs> you had some Fs and Ts and Rs in there. You'd have been better off going <laughs> with Mastafarianism. Yeah. Or hell is newly appendage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a religion I could get behind. <laughs> uh, question six. Within a given field, this letter with a superscript of one defines a line with a point at infinity. What letter is uh, this? Type of series named for this letter takes the form of the infinite sum of n raised to the negative integer and converges when that integer is greater than or equal to two. What letter do they <laughs> use for this? I think they're going to go through the whole alphabet out there. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> B, C, E, Z. You won't get it like that going A, B, C, <laughs> E, Z. <laughs> no. <laughs> In geometry, a value symbolised by this letter equals the sum of the side lengths of a polygon. What letter? Oh. Um, mm. Not X, Timbo Turtle, no. No, no, no. no. When this letter precedes a variable in parenthesis, it denotes the probability that an event will occur. That should give it away. What letter? It should. It should. Well, that's what I was going to put where's Wally, but I'm not sure it's right. <laughs> where's Wally is shouting, hey, to us. 
name this letter of the alphabet used to represent perimeter. It is indeed P, as well, Wes Wally has Wally's suggested. Wally's on his PC. He can do it in the internal to the Wilhelm. Yeah. It is indeed P. <laughs> Next time, Molly, you don't have to put your hand up. You can just go. <laughs> Question seven. People of this type were transported on unmarked freighters called hell ships. What were these people? <laughs> that is the ones. Big Blue's got them. Alan Evans has got them. Guessing. Not slaves, oh. not naughty people either, Dora. Not flirts. Mm. <laughs> Joseph Dietrich oversaw a massacre of 84 people of this type near the Belgian oh. town of Malmody. Oops, That's the one. Put the right Timber. extra letter in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, how can you misspell that, Timbo? But you managed. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> you had three letters. And I only you only had three letters to write and you got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. One person of this type was displayed naked in a tiger cage at the Uno Zoo. Norwegian cruise lines. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Roger Bushell led 76 of these people through the Harry Tunnel in a great escape from Stalag Luft 3. All right. Hogan's hero. There, they got it now. There you go. Yeah, that's correct. Sure with POWs or prisoners of war. Just POWs. Yeah. You don't need the O, do you? <laughs> no, it's POW. It's Louis always POW. Amber. <laughs> yeah. Louis Zamperini recounted his experiences as one of these people in his memoir, Unbroken, in which he survives a B-29 crash before being placed in a Japanese work camp for the remainder of World War II. Give this term for soldiers or civilians captured by enemy troops during an armed conflict. It is indeed prisoners of war. Yeah. I don't know about civilians. I thought POWs always no. armed forces. No, you can be a prisoner of no. war. Yeah. Yeah, you can be a civilian internee and be a POW. Mm. Yeah. We we had, uh, wasn't the some of the great march in the Japanese did was a whole lot of civilians? Was they were considered POWs? Yep. Okay. Question eight. The arrangements of these molecules, substituents, can be isotactic. Syndio tactic or a tactic? What kind of molecules are these? Hydrogen, apparently. The degree of reactions producing these molecules can be calculated as one over the quantity one minus p, according to the Carruthers equation. What kind of molecules okay. are these? I don't think I'm getting this one yet. <laughs> Production of these molecules occurs either in step growth or chain growth mechanisms. <laughs> what kind of molecules? Juice, farmer's boy, juice. That was the last question. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What's funny about that? Alan Evans, you have got it correct. You didn't need the front words in that, but you were beaten out there by Nerd Alert who got it correct. They are indeed polymers. Mm. Yeah. These products are graphically depicted by a molecule in parentheses <laughs> with subscript of N. Yeah. Polyethyl poly Polyethylene is a common example of these substances, which also include Kevlar and nylon. What molecules are composed of repeated monomer units? They are polymers. Question nine. Commandino's theorem describes the concurrence of four of these constructs in a tetrahedron. 
what are these constructs? Now, this has to be a Clive question, right? To <laughs> try that. Fangles. <laughs> if one of these constructs is drawn through the largest angle of a right triangle, its length is equal to half that of the hypotenuse. What is this construct? What is this thing? Not a horizontal. No. Horizontals. <laughs> oh, Diagonals um, isn't the term I'm looking for. No, not right. Not right angle, yeah. Length of these segments can be found from the squares of the side lengths of a triangle via Apollonius' theorem. And these segments are divided in a 2 1 ratio by a concurrence point known as the centroid. What is this thing? Well, it's going to go down to the last clue, I think. Identify yeah. this line that connects the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side, which shares its name with the middle value of a data set. What's it called? I should know, but I don't. Not the meridian. That's close, Wally, but not no. the right one. I will give it to Dora, even though she spelt it incorrectly. But Nerd Alert yeah. got it spelt correctly. No, no. You can't give it to people who spell it incorrectly. <laughs> no. Object heavily. Well, Depends what their native on... language is, Timbo. <laughs> Tim, Timbo, if we insisted on that, there would be a lot of questions that nobody would ever get right. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I'm, it is indeed I think I'm, I think, median. I think I've been facetious the median, yeah. um, there, Alan, because you've never seen some of the right <laughs> answers I give. <laughs> yeah. It's the median. Yeah. Median. Is it the median? Okay. Yeah. I was thinking mid-ordinate, but that didn't sound right. So, yeah. Question 10, your last question. While working for this organisation, Margaret Hamilton coined the term software engineering. What organisation was this? Take a pump. You'd be wrong, Alan. You'd be right, Farmer's Boy. Thank you. A member of this organisation, Aileen, Aileen Collins, has performed the nine-minute-long rendezvous pitch manoeuvre. Mm. What company? Not MIT, Timbo Turtle, No. May Jemison worked for this organisation for 10 years and it employed Catherine Johnson as a human computer. Sure. Yeah, that's right. You got it now, Timbo. I think everybody's got it right out there now. It is indeed <coughs> NASA. This organisation was blamed for the death of the teacher Krista McAuliffe and six others in a 1986 explosion that destroyed a vehicle previously used by Sally Ride. Yeah. An employee of this organisation said, that's one small step for man on a mission with Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> and this organisation that sent Apollo 11 to the moon. That was easy. Yeah, it was indeed NASA. NASA. And there you go. That was your supposedly well, hard quiz. For thank you very much. Yeah. Only thing is, I could be wrong, but I think she was working for MIT when she came up with that term. But anyway, MIT <laughs> will work for NASA. But that's okay. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> there, there is, of course, a very good film about um, some of those women called Hidden Figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that the one I've, 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 I've watched that. I've watched that a couple of times. Yeah, because that that is all that it portrays actual, the women that, that, is... that did the computers and stuff. And, and and these three in particular, they're all black. Mm. 
you know, and they kept saying, why does it take you so long to bring me those figures? Oh, I had to go to the toilet. Yeah. There aren't any toilets in this building for black women. Yeah, you she know, runs she had out to go the to door, the out the building, up. That's right, she had to run <laughs> out the door just because she has to go to a completely different building across the site just so she can go and have a pee. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. The well, the bloke, the bloke fixed that. He came in and ripped the sign down off the wall in the hallway. <laughs> That's it, yeah, their boss, yeah. Yeah, he didn't no, that, do that. That... that that's that's dramatised. He was apparently a bit of a bastard. But that though, was in the show. <laughs> yes, yeah, they do that. They do that in films, you know. Yeah, artistic license, whatever you want to call it. But that's the it. film itself, I, I, I must get round to buying the book one of these days because the film is, is, that, is that the one where the girl's sitting at the desk with the um, computer stuff and she's she's like waiting to get the her um her two bits worth in about it about something for for a problem yeah. and they. Yeah. And she, they wouldn't let her, let her put her two cents worth in about it or something. That's right, because this the, this is pretty much all pre pre computer days, and they had to work out everything by hand. And she's up on that. And of course, if you've seen the pictures, they did have these huge blackboards that you needed a ladder to get to the top to. Right, and she said, "Oh look, this is how you do it." Da, 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 da. It writes out this bloody great equation thing, and it'll, it'll just stand the sky. Shit, yeah, you're right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this black woman's just gone. Oh, this is what yeah. I want. And I can't remember which astronaut it was. Are we good to go? And they're relying on her yeah. to, to go through the figures and go... Glenn? Could have, yeah, could have been. I yeah, it was Glenn, because it was for the Gemini, I think. It was in no, the it was Gemini Mercury. Screen, it was Mercury. Mercury, sorry. Um, Mercury, it might have been, right, I yes. think it might have been Alan Shepard, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he sort of said, I'm not, go, I'm not yeah, going unless she gives Apollo. us the nod, you know. Wow. That's yeah. the yeah, that's the story. Good. Yes, that's, that's a good film. I mean, if if that's half as accurate as it makes out, it's still a oh, good they, film. They they were extremely clever women. There's obviously a lot of um, license in there. Um, oh, yeah, like but... the IB IMB stuff. The guys knew what they're doing, but she was she did get realised that the future for all her people was going to be in computer programming, not in um, hand calculations. So she did teach it learn how to use the IBM computer and then teach it to all the other people. So, yes, there's a few things in there that are semi-true, let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I mean, in a movie, you can't be completely accurate, otherwise it becomes a bit boring. So, Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've finished watching that whole series or not. I can't remember now. Series? This is a film. Oh, I was talking about it's the film. series, that one with the, the women in that Oh, because they were training a whole group, of, oh. weren't they? That was like the the what was it, the Mercury Seven or whatever. They 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 were yeah. they trained up a group of women to do it because one of them went up in um, Jeff Bezos's thing last year, didn't she? She was one yes, of the ones who'd right. gone through all of that training, and now here she was. I mean, what was she in the nineties or whatever, and finally got to go into space yeah. all that time later. Yeah. Can't, that's I right. Can't, she there was there was a name for them. I before. can't remember what the name was. I think there was eleven of them or something. You know. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Mercury Thirteen. That was it. They trained them up, and then none of them ever went into space. No, because the Mercury they went on from Mercury to the next. So. Yeah. I mean, they could have moved him over, but they didn't. So. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. Hello, Anton. Oh, he, here she is. I found her. <laughs> Wally Funk. She was the one who went up. Well. Uh, she, was at, she was at the time um, the oldest person flying to space. She was 82. Until William Shatner went up, of course he's older than her. <laughs> John's uh, awesome. still going to be the oldest woman in space by a long way, though, isn't she? I think so. Yeah, I mean eighty-two. Bloody hell! And she has spent more time in space than I have. Yes, I think she spent more time in space than all of us here put together, hasn't she? Ten times over. Yes. Except for Lindsay, because 
He's hit, hit his eyes in space. Oh, he's a space man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a definite <laughs> space man. <laughs> he's out there. Hmm. Oh, what are you up to, Jerry? I'm um, just wondering whether we should have. Was there a major breakthrough in fusion? Not really. No. Nope. Here are the. No. Nope. <laughs> really... They made out. They made out it was, and when you actually look at it, no, it wasn't. They put in three hundred one. Was it three hundred three jewels and got out three hundred two or three hundred two and got out three hundred three? <laughs> Whatever it was. The other one is <coughs> brains. So it didn't. They they only allegedly got more out than they put in because they changed the definition of what you put in to what you get out, didn't they? Yeah, they didn't they didn't include what they used to boost the energy in the first place. So the layers of energy that they put in wasn't counted. So like so I think they put in three hundred gigawatts of or whatever it is of gigahertz of light, of power into the system to get three hello wonderful person this is anton back or something like yeah can't remember what it was so it's a very slight improvement on previous work in it they actually got more energy back from that system after they put in the starting power so yeah something like that i should look up again now Is there a link between human and octopus brains? Only when they're eating them. <laughs> hmm. Do you know, technically, octopuses don't have legs. No, uh, aliens. No, octopuses only have arms, not legs. I think that's right. I changed the definition of arms, legs, and tentacles. So octopuses have arms and no tentacles. The squids have tentacles. One, two tentacles and six arms, something like that. Well, so much for the uh, Royal Mail being on strike. Because <laughs> I just, I, I hadn't even heard it gone through the letterbox. I just got an email saying, your parcel has been delivered. Oh, thank you very much. I'm still waiting for Blue's parcel. Apparently it rocked up in Melbourne a week ago. It still hasn't found its way. Through. Yeah, I don't know what to do either. That's pretty. Nah, cool. that's all right. Just uh, it'll come. <laughs> I'm expecting it sometime this week, Blue. <laughs> oh, I've got a Wally. Fusion well, thing was pretty cool. Different approach altogether. I was going to ask, did you get much for it on eBay? Yeah, blue. Oh, when you sold it, and then send huh? on the when you sold Paul's thing on eBay, and then <laughs> sent him <on> the <laughs> cardboard box. Did you get much for it? I've pulled You're all right. the old pots off the amplifier board, ready to put the new ones in. So <laughs> I'm just waiting. <laughs> Dora says nobody expects my parcel. Dora. All <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, right. So, so I've got two deliveries this afternoon, one from Amazon and, and my drugs. Oh. Drugs. I finished my drugs. That's very they happy. Bless them. They phoned me up yesterday morning and said, um, 
you've got a delivery due tomorrow. I said, yes. Well, we're not going to be able to do it because the hospital haven't done your repeat prescription. I said, oh, OK. He said, how many have you got left? One. And I'm going to take that today. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we, I'll, I'll, we'll get on with the hospital. Mm-hmm. Yesterday evening, got a text. Your delivery will be tomorrow. Which mm-hmm. is going to be anyway. So. When I, when I got out after surgery, because it was on a Sunday, the doctors wrote a script for all of the blood thinners I need for the 40 days. Mm-hmm. And of course, no one stocks that many. <laughs> and of course, they won't split scripts. But no. I did luckily found a, a warehouse that had them. But I've just finished them. So 40 rotten needle things sticking into you. So don't just do the needles anymore. So that's good. Needles every day, mate. Yeah. Quite used to it. But don't envy you. The horrible thing was that was working at okay would this one hurt because you know about every third one i heard the buggery and then every the other two were not so bad so. <laughs> well this one that's coming this afternoon that's that's the psoriasis drug i inject every every friday and this is the only way you can get them is via this healthcare at home company that deliver the drugs oh, okay hmm. have to be kept in the fridge because they're they're biological drugs you have to keep them inert or whatever you want to term it yeah how are we going terry we were we're there there. i think we We were we were i think he's waiting for us to stop talking we're only talking to filling dead air mate so there was no dead air i had it i had it already up on the screen ready to go yeah yeah well then press play and push play terry G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Hey, this is just a little quick one. We've been watching Raw Space, as I always do, and we see that the ISS, or rather, the Soyuz MS-22 module attached to the ISS has sprung a little bit of a leak. Now, this is rather interesting because we get to see what happens when fluids are released directly into the vacuum of space. And unlike those people who think this is all done in a pool, I'm not sure how we're going to get all those particles going in Lots and lots of different straight lines in all different directions. Now, I spent probably way too much time watching this footage this morning, but if you want to have a look, please hop over to Raw Space's video. Uh, The link's in the description as always. And click like and subscribe to him. He's always a great channel to watch. And as for you, Flatties, I'd love to hear how you explain this one. I might have to ask Flatsoid to have a go at this. He always likes to have an explain of things. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Oh, they got the camera turned the wrong way. That's probably what it'll be. Ah, okay. Yeah. Perspective. Um, something like that. Hmm. Well, that's their ticket home, isn't it, that Sawyer's? This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're continuing to uh, Emergency. take a look at yeah. particles leaking from the uh, Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft docked to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station. This leak uh, was first observed about uh, two hours and 45 minutes ago, around 6.45 I was filmed in reverse. That's what Stewie reckoned. At the time at which <laughs> Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin we're uh, preparing uh, to begin a spacewalk to uh, move uh, outside of the Poisk airlock of the station, a spacewalk designed uh, to move a radiator from the Rosviet module to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. This leak or stream of particles from the area of the instrumentation and propulsion module was associated with uh, a uh, drop in pressure in the cooling loop of the Soyuz MS-22. It is not known uh, what the source of the leak is. Russian specialists are in the process of evaluating. uh, Will it be from a tank, wouldn't it? Taking a careful look at uh, video that is being sent to them from here in Mission Control. While we stand by and uh, wait for further word 
In the meantime, Prokofiev and Patelin safely back inside the International Space Station. They were never in any danger in the airlock, in the Poisk airlock uh, of the station, preparing for their spacewalk. They're now out of their Orlon spacesuits, awaiting further word on uh, what the next course of action will be. This is the Soyuz vehicle that was launched back in September to carry Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, and now Expedition 68 commander, Patelin and NASA's Frank Rubio to the station, launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Space to ground one. Hold me three. Go ahead on space to ground two. I opened uh, 421. And it wouldn't be on one of the sides where there's no camera to see it. Oh, yes. Sod's law clearly, clearly defines that, yeah. Those steps. Uh, would they send a spacewalk mission out there? I wouldn't I be going out that much stuff floating around. <laughs> um, it might be the only way to repair it because you know if they've got a leak we, in the cooling the system and they are generally pressurised, then eventually when it stops leaking, because you've lost all the coolant. Yeah, possibly, but I wouldn't go out until you knew what it was for certain. Yeah, well, that, they. Well, they should be able to work out which, which system it is, but then it's a matter of getting out there and bloody finding it. Because it's 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 going to be external to the pressure hull, isn't it? Because that's that's what they do up there. It, you, you you only have stuff inside that you really 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 need to have inside because obviously it takes up room, which is why certainly on the ISS and and it would be the same with things like the Soyuz. Anything else you put on the outside? Yeah. I'm sure that'd be better to try and find the um, source on the inside if you can first before you. Oh yeah, yeah, out. yeah. If, but yeah. The, the chances are, if it's leaking like that, it's on the outside. Hmm. We'll see. Hopefully, they'll find it. Duct tape will fix it. Duct tape. Duct tape everything. Yeah, that fixes everything. Oh yeah, Terry, push play. Okay. Some of the recent advances and some of the recent videos really Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. Yeah. And in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the recent advances oh, and some of the recent papers in trying to essentially develop new technology to kind of travel between planets. For example, driven by the sun itself or the magnetic field around the solar system in order to propel various spacecrafts, taking us to faraway distances and to faraway places. Or in other words, we're going to be talking about new advances in the propulsion technology when it comes to spacecraft. And here we're going to be mostly talking about technologies that already kind of exist, and we know at least in theory would work very well if we were to actually launch them into outer space. And as you probably know already, one of them was recently launched on the Artemis 1 mission, and was one of the smaller CubeSats that had solar sails on it, and was supposed to use this solar sail technology to travel to a nearby asteroid in order to study it in more detail. But unfortunately, this mission failed. This is, by the way, what it kind of looks like. This is known as the Nia sail. And this is what it was going to look like when deployed. But as we've discussed in the recent Artemis 1 update, Nia sail has actually been unable to communicate with the Orion spacecraft, and so we don't really know what happened to it. It seems to have malfunctioned and possibly ran out of battery. And so this particular mission is unfortunately not going to happen. Which is super sad because it would have been a great demonstration of this technology in order to see how we can use it to travel to various objects. But the thing about solar sails is that, well, there are a few problems here. As you probably know, in order to make a solar sail functional, it has to be hit by light in just the right way. In this case, the propulsion itself is created by the solar pressure from the photons striking the sail. But it also has to be deployed in just the right way, and it has to be always facing the sun. So turning these objects becomes a bit of a problem. Any change of direction will dramatically reduce the amount of solar pressure it's going to be receiving and will thus make it a lot less efficient. So it has to be always pointed in just the right way. But to remedy this issue, some of the scientists in the last year or so started to propose a slightly different technology, diffractive solar sailing. Or in other words, there are ways to diffract the light inside the sail 
changing the direction of light through various electronic means. This is already actually used a lot today in things like barcode scanners, laser rangefinders, and even to map various areas. And so generally we actually understand how to change the direction of light pretty well. It can actually be done through diffraction or refraction. And so there are quite a lot of different methods that can be used here. And this of course means that by building the solar sail out of a very specific material, it becomes possible for the sail to be oriented in other directions in order to essentially create the necessary propulsion. And relatively recently, the scientists studying this, I believe actually got a relatively large grant to try to study this more and to basically create some of the new prototypes. Which in theory means that we could potentially have these in the next decade or so. But naturally this still relies on the solar pressure and would also not really work really well around more distant objects. For example, here around Saturn, we only really get about 2% of the total sunlight, and so the solar pressure here is going to be really low. It's going to be really difficult to control these crafts. And so most of these particular devices and these technologies have really been developed to try to study the sun, for example, or to try to move around the inner solar system, maybe around Mars, the asteroid belt, or closer to Mercury. It obviously becomes a lot more efficient as you move closer to the sun itself. But then how do we use this around distant objects? Can we actually one day take these to, for example, Jupiter? Well, the only proposition I know of that involves traveling farther away involves some kind of a laser propulsion, essentially firing a really powerful laser from planet Earth, trying to hit the solar cell and trying to make it accelerate away from the planet. But this is still in really early development and has never really been tested. As a matter of fact, I don't really know if we even have accurate enough laser technology to make this happen. Here you would have to hit 